Hello everybody and welcome back to Family Tea Time. Now is the time to grab something to drink, something to eat, maybe some of your favorite books and grab your parents. And it's time to just spend some time, some good time, some fun time and some stories together. Today we're going to read a story about a panda and it's going to be amazing. We'll see you just now. Three, two, one, go! So welcome back with your tea or your drink and your snacks. Our coffee's still on the stove, but we've got uh, some nice cinnamon rolls that just came out the oven. It's a good day for cinnamon rolls because it's snowing outside here in Michigan today. So our story that we're going to read now is called A Little Panda by someone called Renata Lewiska. And this is one of our favorite stories. So, Little Panda. Just the other day, Grandfather Panda was talking to his grandson. I am going to tell you a story of a little panda and the tiger that flew, he said. But that's silly. Tigers can't fly, interrupted the grandchild. How do you know if you haven't heard the story yet, asked Grandfather. Once there was a little panda named Bao Bao. Grandfather began. He lived with his mother, Lin Lin, in the misty mountains of China. They lived alone, but Bao Bao did not feel alone. He had his mother, and she was the world to him. Here I come, Mama! Bao Bao hollered as he ran and chased his mother. I've got you now! he yelled as they wrestled. Up here! he laughed as they climbed and swung from the branches. Down here! He shouted as he fell from the trees. Bao Bao was very good at falling. Playing was not just for fun. It was also the way Lin Lin taught Bao Bao important panda lessons. Run if someone chases you, his mother advised. Wrestle with them if they get too close. And most important, climb a big tree to get away. After playtime, his mother sat down to snack on her favorite food, bamboo. Lin Lin loved to eat almost as much as Bao Bao loved to play, which was good because grown pandas need to eat a lot of bamboo. So much, in fact, that Bao Bao's mother sometimes needed to travel for hours, if not days, in search of food. But the little panda didn't mind. If there was one thing he liked more than playing, it was sleeping. When his mother went in search of bamboo, he climbed up his favorite tree to nap until she returned. One day, Lin Lin said to Bao Bao, Don't you think you are getting too big for that little tree? Of course not. It's my favorite spot, he answered. Well, you be careful while I am gone, warned his mother as she left in search of food. But Bao Bao did not hear her. He was already asleep. Uh -oh. Every now and then, uh -oh. Bao Bao would wake to stretch his legs or readjust his position before going back to sleep. Once, as he was moving to get comfortable, he heard a noise from below. Thinking it was his mother, he called down sleepily, Mama, is that you back from your bamboo dinner? 
But his mother did not answer. Instead, a deep voice heard, I have something else in mind for dinner. Bao Bao scurried higher up the tree. The tiger followed and scratched him on the bottom. Ouch! he cried. Bao Bao climbed higher still, but it was such a small tree. Soon he reached the top and couldn't go any further. The tiger lunged. I have you now, he growled. But the tiger missed. Bao Bao fell just as the cat struck. He was very good at falling. When Bao Bao looked up, he saw that the tree was empty and the tiger was nowhere in sight. A little while later, his mother returned. I just saw the strangest thing. A tiger flying through the sky, she said. That's silly. Tigers can't fly. Bao Bao answered from his perch high above on a very large tree. And that's my story, Grandfather said. What do you think? Well, if you put it that way, I guess a tiger could have flown, the grandchild admitted. I guess you'll just have to take my word for it, Grandfather said. If there's one animal that lives up to the saying, you are what you eat, it's probably the giant panda. Nearly every aspect of a panda's life revolves around bamboo. Giant pandas eat, and eat, and eat. Pandas can spend more than half of each day eating. To understand why pandas eat so much, you need to look more closely at what they eat. Bamboo, a giant woody grass, is a very poor nutritional source, low in protein and high in fiber that pandas can't digest well. Yet, bamboo comprises 99% of a panda's diet. To compensate, pandas need to eat 20 to 40 pounds a day. Pandas have quite a bit in common with carnivores. A panda's digestive system is more closely related to that of a carnivore than an herbivore, which explains why they don't digest plants very well. Fortunately, they have other adaptations that help them chow down on bamboo stalks, including large, powerful jaws. When they're not eating, pandas rest, and rest, and poop, and poop. Since they don't digest bamboo very well, pandas end up passing a lot of it as waste, which unsurprisingly contains a lot of undigested bamboo bits. Pandas defecate more than 100 times a day, producing more than 40 pounds of waste. Pandas even go number two while they're napping. And they spend a lot of time napping as a way to compensate for their low energy diet. Pandas have tiny cubs because of their poor diet. Baby giant pandas are born blind, helpless, and tiny, weighing just five ounces, or about one thousandth the size of their mom. Of all placental mammals, panda cubs are the tiniest in comparison to their mother. Why so small? The mother's diet plays a role. Due to her low metabolism, a panda mother has a relatively low blood oxygen level, so the cub can get more oxygen outside the womb. Panda's black and white fur may help them camouflage. Once again, we can look at a panda's diet to help understand why its fur is the color it is. Pandas don't store enough fat to hibernate like other bears, so they have to keep eating bamboo all year round. And since they're always roaming in search of bamboo, pandas are unable to shed their fur quickly enough to match their background like other animals can. So their black and white pattern may be sort of a compromise. White fur allows them to blend into snowy backgrounds. Black fur allows them to blend into shady forest backgrounds. Historically, pandas inhabited a much wider range than they do today and faced multiple predators. So at the time, they may have relied more on their camouflage ability. Today, pandas are not at as high a risk from predators, but rather from a loss of bamboo. 
The good news is that the giant panda's conservation status was recently upgraded from endangered to vulnerable. An estimated 1,850 pandas remain in the wild in China, an increase of 17% over the past decade. However, pandas still face significant threats tied closely to their food source. Human development has driven pandas into isolated, fragmented mountain regions, restricting their access to bamboo. Additionally, climate change threatens to eliminate more than a third of the bamboo habitat that pandas rely on by the end of the century. Thank you so much for joining us for our family tea time and reading time. You can send pictures and videos of your favorite books to Grace Kids. That's with a Z. At gracelife.co, not.co.za and not.com, or you can WhatsApp it to plus two seven two one eight eight zero zero one six eight. It would be awesome to hear from you and see what you're doing, and we might share it on tomorrow's program. Have a great day.